Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's been a while, and Merry Christmas. Today, for this video, we've got the 2022 iPhone SE. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. The iPhone SE third generation was announced back in March, alongside the new iPad Air, the M2 MacBook Air, and a whole bunch of other stuff that no one liked. At first glance on the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell it apart from an iPhone 8. They have the same body, the same camera, the same screen, the same glass back. They can even fit into each other's cases. But they're not the same. Let's talk about the camera. The camera on this iPhone has the same external hardware as the iPhone 7 and 8, and even similar to the iPhone 6s. Here we have two images. On the left, the iPhone 7, and on the right, the iPhone SE. As you can see, they look really similar. For all you people out there who actually care about the camera specs, I'll give them to you. It has a 7 megapixel selfie camera with f 2.2 aperture and f 1.8 main camera. I have no idea what that means, but just in case you wanted to know. I'd say overall, this phone packs a pretty good camera. Here are some samples. This is the front camera video quality right now. I think it's pretty good, but you guys let me know down in the comments what you think of it. As you might have seen in some of those pictures, this phone clearly has no night mode on the camera. The Apple iPhone 11 was the first iPhone to get night mode on its camera, but it was not because of the new cameras. It was because of the processor. The A13 Bionic chip, which was the chip in the iPhone 11, was gave it the ability to have night mode. And I struggle to see why Apple couldn't put night mode on a phone like this one that has the A15 Bionic chip, which is even faster and newer. Night mode is just a software feature, which means since we didn't see it on this phone, Apple is just trying to give reasons for some people to upgrade to the more expensive iPhones. This phone has wireless charging, but that doesn't mean MagSafe. If you were to place this phone on a MagSafe charger, it would still charge, but the charger wouldn't magnetically stick to the back of it. The wireless charging isn't the fastest, so I'd still stick to regular charging. With the wire, it is capable of charging speeds of up to 20 watts, if you can afford one of Apple's expensive charging bricks. I still can't believe what they did to us, but that brings us to battery life. The battery life on this phone isn't bad, and according to Apple, it can last 2 hours longer on video playback compared to the iPhone SE second generation from 2 years ago. Apple doesn't disclose their battery capacities, but according to XDA developers, it has about 2,018 milliamp hours. If I charge my phone to 100% battery overnight, I usually get home in the evening with around 40 to 50% battery capacity left. I think that's pretty good. FYI, I'm gone using it from around 5.30 in the morning until 6 at night, but I'm a pretty light user. This is a huge improvement from the iPhone 7 I had a few months ago, which I would charge it overnight, put it on airplane mode and low power mode, and it would usually still be dead by around noon. This could have been because of the 80% battery health, or it could have been Apple trying to make my phone malfunction so that I would be forced to upgrade to a newer one, like I ended up doing, as you can see. Next, we'll talk about the performance and processing speed. This phone has the A15 Bionic chip inside, which is the same chip that Apple used in the iPhone 13. When I first got it, it was lightning fast, and it still is pretty fast, but ever since I installed iOS 16, it just been a little bit slower. This processor allowed the iPhone SE third generation to have some features previously only found on the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, like photographic styles. Photographic styles might seem just like a filter, but it's really not. While a filter is more of like an overlay, photographic styles completely changes the way that the phone processes the image that you capture. The default photographic style looks like the regular Apple style of photos. The rich contrast looks more like it was taken by a Google Pixel, and vibrant looks sort of like Samsung. This phone has 5G, which basically means the phone is more expensive, but you don't get a lot more out of it. Short history lesson, back in 2019 through 20, when 5G was kind of like the new big thing, it was all advertised like you could do anything from anywhere at lightning fast speed, but that is not the case. Instead, two years later after all that stuff, every now and then you see the little 5G thing pop up in the top left corner of your screen. 
When you have 5G like this, it's not really much faster than the 4G LTE. On top of that, this phone has the Sub-6 5G, which isn't even the real millimeter web 5G that everyone was all excited about two years ago. I've got an entire video coming on why 5G is the worst, but that video might get delayed until spring break. We'll see. Now it's time to talk about design and build quality. Like I said earlier, this phone has the same design as the iPhone 8, but apparently it has the toughest glass in a smartphone, which should make it a little more resistant to drops. That's not really the case, because when I first got this phone and I was setting it up, I was being extra extra careful because I didn't have the case or screen protector yet. And by the time I got the case and put it in, there was already a little crack of it in the back, like toughest glass in a smartphone. This phone has IP67 water resistance, which means that you can put it in a meter of water for half an hour without it breaking. This isn't really saying much because considering that phones cheaper than this have better water resistance. So you know what it's time for now? Drop test. Well, it's time. Three, two, one. I promise I just did the drop test and it's time for the moment of truth. No way. It still works. Well, there's no scratches and it's still turned on. I guess it's a pretty tough phone. This phone gives you the home button, which is completely superior to the newer gesture based systems on the more expensive iPhones. There are lots of advantages of having a home button. One, you get an actual button to push. Two, you get touch ID, which is way better than the newer face ID. And you don't have to pull down a mask or whatever you're wearing on your face. Next, we'll briefly go over the display, which isn't the greatest, but I think it's okay. It's an LCD panel and it has 60 Hertz. If you look closely, you can see the pixels and it's, it's basically the same screen found on the iPhone 6S. This looks pretty bad on a phone at this price, especially considering that some of the even cheaper Samsung phones have brighter, bigger, smoother OLED displays. It's not a very bright screen, but you can still see it outside if you angle a little way from the sun. This isn't a very big deal for me though, but that's coming from someone who hasn't known anything better. For the last, most important part, we'll talk about the big question. Should you buy one? Well, the short answer is no. First of all, it's basically the exact same thing as the iPhone SE second generation from two years ago, plus the slightly, very slightly faster processor. The main differences are this one has that stupid 5G, and it costs $430 instead of $400, which was the price of the second generation from 2020. With the high inflation and all that's going on right now, the extra $30 isn't really Apple's fault, but I still think it's a waste of money. This phone looks even worse when you stack it up against the Google Pixel 6a which is only $20 more and packs a way bigger package. The Google Pixel 6a has the Google Tensor chip, which is why Google's phones are widely regarded as the smartest smartphones. It has a bigger, brighter OLED display, its cameras blow the iPhone SE 3rd generation out of the water, and it also just looks cooler. In short, the iPhone SE 3rd generation is just a really bad buy, and it is probably the biggest purchasing mistake of my life. For the speed and performance though, I'll give it a pretty generous 3 out of 10 stars. Hey guys, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you thought this video was helpful or informative, maybe leave that like down below by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, well, maybe consider subscribing. That's all for today guys. Peace.